From downtown Scranton, this is Northeast Current. WQPX invites you to join us as we explore public affairs, current events, and arts and culture in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. Now, let's meet today's guests on Northeast Current. Welcome to Northeast Current. We're here at the Hexagon Project 10. It's our 10th anniversary of the Hexagon Project, and we're here to interview Beth and Cindy regarding the Hexagon Project and a special display that Cindy has here. But Cindy's not with us. She's going to be on Skype. So let's go over and talk to Cindy. Okay, Cindy, we're here at the, Ste again, we're here at the Steamtown, uh, Marketplace at Steamtown, and we're at the Hexagon Project, and we have a, a special uh, addition this year to the Hexagon Project. Can you explain that to us? I have been working with issues regarding water for a long time, and that ties into what best Hexagon project has been about. So we've collaborated before in uh, 07 and 09 there were installations. So this is our third go around and on the floor is a large flare parachute about 16 feet and it has numerous messages about ice and water and in some cases some reference to climate refugees. Okay, explain some of your background why you why you have done this. As I studied the water issue and I saw the complexities of international um, resource and planet compromise, I tried to make something that people could read messages from history, from each other and from me, that would let them learn at their own pace and look at a really difficult issue which currently is the melting of the ice in the Arctic. The sea ice is almost down to nothing but baby ice. No second, third, fourth, fifth year ice. And that's extremely dangerous. So it's a hard piece to make because we're looking at a really, really tough thing if we want to even imagine a fix. Okay, tell us where you have taken this project. You said you've been at uh, Harvard, uh, different universities all over the country. The piece started in 95 in a place called Greencastle, Pennsylvania, where they have an environmental center called Teamenasakta, which means never-ending water. And I've added the idea of never-ending clean water and worked with them and moved the show from them to the Children's Museum in Pittsburgh, where it was four stories, and to MIT in the Stata building that Frank Geary designed that was considered to be a bit of a fishbowl, so it fit very well there. So the messaging was expanded wherever it went. So at MIT, the science portion was uh, extended. And recently, I sent an email to Dr. Elliot Penn State. He's a glaciologist, and he responded last night that he loved the images that he saw of your exhibit. And he said, fine, the message he had been quoted was, was good to put in the show. Thank you so much. Any other thing you'd like to add before we close? No, I just would hope that the poster we made with links um, would help anybody who, you know, want, wants to upgrade and is aware that the climate issues are extremely critical and not contested by most any scientist that isn't paid by a fossil fuel interest. So the, the, the links to uh, This Isn't Cool, which is a Yale connection where my daughter was just a student, um, it is very thorough and walks you through many aspects, including what's happened, why a broken jet stream is giving us this hot, cold, hot, cold. Thank you. Any, uh, uh, Thank you. Okay, one more question I want to ask you. Where can someone get in touch with you if they have a question? Pardon? If someone wants to get in touch with you, where do they contact you? Uh, Windsphere.org. We're here at, at the Hexagon Project, two, uh, 2016. We're here with Beth. Burkhauser, the founder of the Hexagon Project, and she's going to ex explain more of what Cindy was talking about and some of the interactive activities that we have going on today. It's, it's, um, the place of the artist is extremely important, uh, we believe, at the Hexagon Project. It's important in the world. The artist has important things to say, but in a different way. And so Cindy's installation is a very visual piece, yet there's text to read and respond to and learn about. Um, as is ma are many of our t hexagons that we have displayed by students and community around the world. Now this particular display is a, a waterfall of what Cindy calls bubbles. 
we couldn't make them hexagons, but you know, they're still connected to each other and they're flowing and each bubble says something about the water, the wetland plants, uh, our energy dependency, and it's, it's, everyone is invited to come and read and also read in the front showcase windows which Cindy uh, uh, installed, her uh, beautiful installation uh, circular piece, the web of life in the center, and then to create a response that they would like to. So this part to write on, to take home, this part to write on, to leave here. And you can see we've already started. We had a yoga class and uh, one little young lady, only eight years old, did the water cycle and added that up here. I, wanted, I want her to talk to Cindy later. Uh, we have quite a few responses and pictures up here on this wall. So uh, not only do we want people to come and view our hexagons, but we want them to have some kind of physical relationship by making a stand and making a statement here today. We're, we're continuing our hexagon project at the 10th anniversary, and we have Beth here again, and she's going to explain uh, the purpose of the hexagon project and the different school levels and what it takes to be part of the hexagon project. So again, the uh, Hexagon Project is open to everyone worldwide. Uh, specifically, we cover uh, education in education, uh, grades preschool through 12. We have representations from all over the world, a few continents like Australia and Asia, uh, and also the United States, also Egypt. Um, our purpose is to recognize that our world is small and we need to see ourselves as connected and interconnected and solve global problems and issues together and not be divisive building barriers but to open ourselves to the world and see our commonalities and celebrate them and then come together to solve problems and that's what these hexagons really in many ways are all about but they're tailored to different age groupings. Now right in front of you, you see that we have um, our hexagonal sand mandala, which is a symbol of creating and focusing uh, in on uh, a meditative experience. But the sand in itself uh, is an, an, an impermanence uh, in Buddhism. Uh, there is an impermanence to everything. And in fact, a little four-year-old girl went around and completely erased the outside edges. And I could have gotten upset about it, but you know what? Nothing lasts. So we have to accept that and move on. So that's, and so we're completing this today, I think. Uh, students, uh, we've got um, some, some young people working on this now. Uh, Lily and Landon, and they're, really into it. And then over here uh, is our, we're starting, we're starting with um, preschool kindergarten. And a wonderful, incredible entry into the project is from Australia, from the University of Melbourne's uh, preschool kindergarten school that's on campus. And their whole m mission uh, in a year-long celebration of taking care of the earth and connecting children to the earth. They call it Kohi, come here, listen to me. And these children have created works of art about their connection in different strands and different themes. Um, some of them are about uh, conserving electricity and water, um, are keeping the bees alive. And all of these things they've studied and they've created drawings and put this together. And we also have a partnership with the University of, um, or Seton Hill University in Greensburg above, where uh, early education students partnered with kindergartners and read a book about interdependence and how we're connected. They created an artwork, uh, the kindergartners did, and these, the college students translated into a fibers piece. So that's a collaboration which we encourage among our participants. Collaboration is the heart of interdependence. So we move on to some of our local schools, Charles Sumner, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, Whittier School, Friends Scranton are involved. Over here we have 
uh, hexagons coming from uh, these all in this beautiful panel um, among Cindy's uh, installation uh, mobile are all of these are from Nepal and they have been partners with us for about nine years of our ten years uh, with the hexagon product so this is, this is our Nepali uh, there are many here from an elementary school in uh, Australia another partnership in Australia and an elementary level uh, so we go along here and uh, we move up to grades four and six and uh, these have been created by children on a more serious level, some of them, about bullying and about war. Uh, um, and all of these actually are intense statements, activist statements. I think art is active. It is, you are an activist when you create art, just as Cindy is. All of these pieces speak to issues that are important in these students' lives. Bullying, autism, the endangered species, many, many interesting subject areas. Along here we have quite a quite a expanse of hexagons from grades four and six. And you can hear in the background, I don't know if that's gonna we're uh, we're going to have a drum circle. And what is a drum circle? But the interaction of people together. We're giving award, special awards today to groups uh, in the community that are recognized. Uh, Blue Ridge High School uh, is getting an award. Um, we're having um, another award for, award for Catholic Social Services for uh, uh, World Refugee Day. And uh, we also have an award for Jamie Borman who put art into action by creating uh, pillows for cancer, cancer survivors, uh, or pe cancer, people who have breast cancer, women, and um, they're under chemotherapy. So she created uh, heck, uh, pillows for them. So it, these are people who are out in the community acting uh, through their art. So over here are uh, some artists' books, which have been created this is an incredible one about just nature in itself. And uh, by, uh, these are by students from um, Riverside Junior and Senior High School and also from Abington Heights High School. These are our local participants. But going across the world, moving across the world, we have this whole section which was created by a, a high school in Adelaide, Australia about fast fashion. They're all fabric collages and they have explored. This is another thing that happens with our project. These are their research papers. So this goes deeper. This is not a superficial kind of project. Teachers can take this and make it deeper and more meaningful to their students. Every single one of these has a paper attached to it that you can read if you would like to. And a new thing that we just started are QR codes. And some of these pieces have QR codes attached to them because when people register online, they actually write about their work. And now with a QR code, you can, if you have a reader on your cell phone, you can just put it over and you can read about what the students had to say about their work as well as the visual piece. Here, here is a video opportunity for any teachers uh, who teach media. This is a Photoshop uh, animation. And right here, and it will be on our website, right here are the instructions on how to make this. And we found this person from, uh, he lives in um, the Netherlands is a graphic designer and he shared his process with us and you can learn how to do it using Photoshop. So teachers, we invite you to create an animated video for next year for our project. Okay Beth, we, we toured the Hexagon project and we just want to wrap it up. In, in, in 2017, what are you looking for in the Hexagon project? 
All right, we are about to decide upon a theme. We're not 100% sure, but we'll be putting that up on our website. We'll have our materials available, uh, updated on our website, but they're still viable uh, at this moment. If anyone wants to go on it, it's www.hexagon.org. And uh, you can contact me, uh, Beth Burkhauser, at B, B-U-R-K-H-A-U-S-E-R at msn.com if you have any questions. Uh, we'll be Facebooking things about next year and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, and, and anybody wants the show remains open for a few more days? It's going to be open until the 24th. Uh, we'll take it down on the 24th, so that's next one more week, yes. So please come, our hours of operation will be weekdays from uh, uh, 3 until 7 in the evening and um, that's probably about it for the week. Saturday we'll, we, we, will, we will be here but we'll be dismantling but you're welcome to come and take a look if you have time. Thank you Beth for sharing us uh, the 10th anniversary of the Hexagon Project. And I'm so happy that you, were, you did this and you came and uh, welcome and uh, thank you very very much. <laughs>